The story of Betavolt's nuclear battery has been going viral as of late in how it will change human society. But there's a fair amount of speculation as to the legitimacy of mass adoption of this type of battery due to some of the components that are needed. So is it all hype? Let's talk about it. This is the battery in question. It's by Betavolt with a claim of a battery that can run continuously for 50 plus years without the need to ever be recharged. The battery can also operate in extremely low temperatures and it's nearly unbreakable as well. And while this is a pretty amazing announcement, there are some parts of it that are a bit too good to be true in this instance. Hypothetically, let's discuss how this would work based on the picture of the battery itself and we'll get an idea of what's inside. First, it's a nuclear battery with nickel 63 inside and even says on the front of it, caution, radioactive material. So it's a nuclear battery, a tiny version of it anyway, which generates its energy from nuclear fission. Not the same way a nuclear power plant or thermoelectric generators, which NASA has been doing for decades, but rather than generating heat to produce energy. What's being theorized in this battery is something new or somewhat new. So in today's landscape, Energy creation comes from three primary principles, one being the Faraday's law of induction by moving a magnet inside of a coil to produce electric current by using physical motion, basically meaning when a turbine spins, it produces electricity in basic terms. Not in all cases, but in most, water is heated, which produces steam, which drives the turbine, generating electricity in the most common way today. And another way is electric chemistry, which is the batteries that we know of today. And while different ways to create electricity by chemical reactions, they're mainly used for electrical storage. And then finally, there's also the photovoltaic effect, and it's otherwise known as solar panels. Using the photovoltaic effect to convert sunlight directly into electricity. This uses energy from the sun, or photons, to excite the electrons inside certain materials to generate electricity. And aside from the primary methodology, there are a few others, but that covers the mass majorities. I know I can I can see the hateful comments now. If I left one out, feel free to yell at me in the comments section. But there are other message, methods, and they're generally those that create electricity in smaller amounts rather than the normal ones. The methodology claimed here, which not much detail has been provided to be clear, it's, it, it, but it also isn't exactly new. It's been researched and studied for nearly 20 years at this point, but its initial use was to rid the planet of excess radioactive waste since this method uses radioactive waste to produce additional energy. It's a great concept, right? Get rid of something terrible for something beneficial. I, I certainly had me intrigued. But we do know how this works because it's been proven many times before, but it hasn't reached full potential as of yet. Inside of the battery itself is something called a shot key diode, the typical semiconductor diode that allows current to flow once a certain voltage is applied, and this version uses the diamond shot key diode. It uses a discovery made in the early 2000s, which offers some unique properties such as high thermal conductivity, high breakdown, voltage, and low leakage current, making them promising for high power and high frequency electronic applications. And basically meaning if you place a diamond next to certain types of radioactive material, it actually generates small amounts of electricity. Diamond being an extremely structured carbon, when it interacts with certain very energetic electrons, known as beta particles, which are emitted through radioactive decay, it disrupts the structure so much that it starts to shift electrons inside of it, and it generates an electric current. So really, any nuclear waste that produces beta particles can theoretically produce even more energy if you put it next to a diamond cell. So by stacking diamonds next to certain radioactive elements, the diamond shot key diode becomes possible. But again, this technology is not new. It's been almost two decades now. So why don't we have these batteries prevalent in today's society in any capacity? Well, for one, diamonds are utilized and they have to be nearly perfect to be applicable. Any deformation or imperfection within the diamond provides a dramatic reduction in energy creation or none at all. And worst of all, if there is an imperfection, it could potentially also break the diamond itself. Another part is simply the reputation of radioactive materials. 
I know I wouldn't want to have a battery in my phone that's radioactive material as I hold it consistently up to my face or into my pocket. We've already heard conspiracy theories of cell phones melting our brains or 5G towers causing cancer and such, just to say the general public tends to live in a fear-based approach to certain technologies. Now, that's not even playing into the fact that diamonds are, well, expensive. So they're far more expensive than any typical electrochemical batteries that we use right now, and the manufacturing hasn't truly found an ROI as of yet. I also mentioned that this battery uses nickel-63, which is synthesized today to use widely, mainly in detectors, but it's not exactly in high demand or relatively available either, which presents another issue. If we have these batteries to power every cell phone on the planet, as Betavolt is claiming can be done, production would have to multiply by hundreds of thousands compared to the levels of today. Now, in theory, the battery produces 3 volts and around 1.5 watts in power, and if you scaled, you could power a smartphone for 50 years without ever needing to be charged. So, is this around the corner? No, I just don't think that it is. It is interesting and is potentially a baby step toward having batteries so powerful that recharging our devices could be something of the past in the next decade or two, certainly. What do you think about the Betavolt battery? Do you think that it's going to change the way that we live our daily lives? Or if I missed a key point, let me know down in the comments down below. I want to thank our sponsors, Kincannon Business Consulting. Kincannon brings technology, systems, and expertise to your business to shorten the timeline of execution to a profitable future roadmap. Other consultancies bring a costly army. Kincannon brings an efficient SWAT team. So if you're looking for a consultancy with a track record of success across many industries, reach out to Kincannon Business Consulting to set up a discussion. You can reach out to them by email at inquire at That's going to do it for today. We're going to talk some more emerging tech next time. Bye, everybody.